everyone and welcome to this episode of Steve's Horse Show. Today we are going to show you how horse feed is made and I'm with the president of Blue Bonnet Feed, John Langermeyer. Thanks for having us out. Hey, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. We're happy to show you the mill. We're excited about what we do here, so let's take a look around. Wait. process to making feed is obviously getting all the commodities into the plant. Um, that process is brought in at this facility on a railroad uh, rail carts and then they are brought in with a pretty fancy uh, computer system here and he's going to explain how that process works. But um, all the system is, um, so from the unloading system we've got three different bays we can unload from, truck or two rails. Um, the ingredients are going to go into the basement. Um, get conveyed all over the top using an elevator and then distributed in between these 36 different bins we have. Um, these bins can, have, can vary in size based off of the ingredient. So something like rice holds very fluffy or has a lot of really low density. So it's gonna be, takes up a lot of room or calcium is dense and it takes up less room. So depending on the ingredient is how much storage we need for each one. So everything comes in on a cart and is, is it actually put underground like this picture yeah. kind of shows? Correct. and then yeah. elevate it up to the top. Yeah, so in our basement, we have a 50 foot long drag that's gonna take it over to the elevator, which is gonna convey it 200 feet up in the air and then distribute it in between these different bins. You mentioned some of the deals that these trucks might be hauling products beforehand and stuff like that. Obviously, um, you do like certain sort of uh, testing with these products once you pull them off the truck to ensure that uh, they are bringing you what they told you they're bringing and stuff like that. Correct, so uh, before we even unload a truck, before we even weigh it in, we, we see what he had on before. Um, biggest thing that for our camp, what we're looking out for, fertilizer, fertilizer particularly urea. Um, so if they have, if they've carried that before, they're calling say corn, well, we will reject it based off what they had before. Because um, that can become a contamination in the overall system. So we're not, we don't want to take the risk of their truck not being clean. Sure, you know, they said they cleaned it out. Sure. Um, and then once we once we get it around, everything's approved. Once we get it to the unloading pit, um, we're looking for you know, corn material tests, contamination, things like that, and just overall quality. Um, we run tests on it before we unload it, make sure it's meeting our standards for protein, fat, fiber, moisture, and things like that. Just so in the whole process, everything looks good. So. So basically from there, the everything is poised and ready to go for the different mixes and stuff like that. We'll go upstairs to see exactly how you select the ingredients to come down into the mixer at that point. So the second process to making feed is once all the commodities get to their proper bins and their proper places, they then have to go into a mixing station. So talk about that. You have all your commodities located up top and you've got to select which ones to dump into a mixing station. How does that process work? Okay, so um, so we use an automated system much like the Lowe. Um, it's going to, it has a formula locked in, preloaded into the system. Um, operator comes in says I want to make 12 tons of this feed. He's going to key it in, um, tell it where he's going, whether he's going to the pellet mill or down to the sacking line, and then he'll hit start. Um, the system's automatically, based off the formula, going to weigh up every ingredient, major ingredient, um, commodity wise, and then the operator will hand dump all of the small micro ingredients, minerals. If you need to add like just that. a small amount in, they can do yeah. it at that time. Correct, yeah, so it'll hand add it, but all the major things are gonna be weighed up in the scale up to uh, 8,000 pounds. Okay. Um, once it reaches the desired weight, um, it'll go into our mixer. Um, it'll mix for a certain amount of time. If it's something that requires a liquid, say soil oil or um, mineral oil, it's gonna mix longer to ensure that it gets an even coat from the whole process. Um, so what could go, and not to like set yep. you up for a question or anything, but what could go wrong in this that somebody might see like something happen in their bag of feed? What are what are some common things that might be um, messed up in this in this stage or could be potentially messed um, up? Something like an over application of oil. Um, I've seen that happen before. Um, our, our, we calibrate our meters periodically. Okay. And sometimes we've had it before. The biggest thing is when we have a power surge. And we, we may lose that calibration. Gotcha. So, so we normally, when we see that, we'll go back and that's check the calibration, calibrate. make sure we're getting but Sometimes the a power surge happens when you don't know about it, and exactly. that's that's how that can happen. Okay. Yeah. When, and obviously, it can happen the a reverse way, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if you get a feed that's too dry, yep. is that also happening? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it, can, it can throw up calibration either way. Gotcha. Um, and then when we do run feed, we sequence our feed. Okay. 
Okay. Um, bigger thing um, where you can see contamination is if I say I run uh, a versatile feed through my mixer and it has corn in it, and then I try to mix something behind it that doesn't have corn, there could be a, a carryover contamination. Okay. These these equipment, you know, we, we do maintenance on them regularly. We clean them and stuff like that. But there's always you know the contamination. If something no stuck, where no things can get, get yes. held up. Okay. So we do a sequencing of. Before we run a feed that doesn't have corn, we run something in between it that will clean out the system the best as possible. Gotcha. Um, well, there be an example of that, like a cube or some sort of like exactly. clunky, clunky something, thing that would yeah, clean something out that will, that's going to clean it out, um, pick up all the odds and ends, and just you know, with no risk of contamination to the other feed, it's, right. it's just going to not in, in best whole, you know, clean out the system. So from here. Um, it, it'll get sent over to the pellet mill to get pelleted or down to the sacking line to get sacked. That would be something like a sweet feed or a poultry feed that has uh, pellets and commodities mixed with it. Okay. So from here, all the ingredients get mixed up, but some of them go to, um, like you said, the, the proper bagging station for a texture feed. Some of them go to a pellet and that adds another process, which is uh, mixing them and uh, breaking down those ingredients into basically like a mash, right? Correct. So the next process is some of the ingredients go then to get back, but some ingredients, if you want to make it into a pellet, have to go through an additional process. Talk about the process where all the ingredients go into a some sort of a tank almost, and they get kind of mashed in together um, into this little mash and then pelletized after that. Talk about that process. So uh, once the feed is mixed here, it's all ready to go. It'll be sent to the pellet mill. Um, the, it's going to be stored overhead. Once we're ready to pellet, it's going to come flow through the process. The first thing it's going to come through is a conditioner. Um, as a conditioner, we're adding um, either me, uh, excuse me, molasses or steam. Um, those two things are going to help make a good pellet. Um, using the steam, is what it does is it's going to break the ingredients apart a little bit down to a, a very small point of spreading the starches apart, is what I said. And then we add the molasses, and from there it's going to actually go into the pellet machine. Um, it's going to go into the center of it and use the centrifugal force of the feed is going to be forced to the outside and then the rollers push that feed it's spinning the hole yeah okay yeah. it's just it's spinning, spinning it's really going yep. faster and faster and once it hits the the right size of a pellet it then yep. gets released right yep. and so once it goes through the die um, we've got knives on the inside that are going to cut it the right length gotcha. so, so the mash gets heated gets added molasses it goes into the pellet mill using the force of the rollers in the pellet mill it's going to force that mash through the desired hole, the pellet size, and then we'll cut it and then we'll cool it. Okay. Um, proper cooling is going to help to make sure we don't have a lot of fines. If, you, if it's still hot and you try to send it to the next place, it's going to break apart and then you get short so pellets. So that's when the people get a bag of pellets and a lot of fines are a lot of fines. Yep. It's because it wasn't cooled yeah. long enough. Wasn't cooled long enough or just poor quality. Yeah. Okay. So. okay. And then uh, also another common thing is uh, if somebody gets a bag of, obviously if you get a bag of moldy feet, it could be because the feed store like us let it get dripped on or something like that, but I've seen where before a lot of the pellets have a bunch of mold in them uh, spread throughout the bag. Is that from this same process? Like maybe it didn't yeah. cool long enough or something Correct. like that? Yeah, so, so usually, so when we're, we're heating setting with steam, it's usually getting up to about 150 degrees. Okay. Um, we don't go too much harder than that because then we start losing some of our... Uh, the integrity of the and ingredients. Can, well, that, yeah, the integrity of the ingredients. Mainly your uh, probiotics. Oh, you get too okay. hot with them, you can kind of damage them and kill them. Gotcha. Um, okay. So, so we get to about 150. Um, it, when we go into a cooler, it's gonna it has counter air flowing through it that's gonna heat it down to ambient temperature. So what it is outside. Um, huh. If you go any hotter than that, then you're you're not pulling that moisture out of the cube or the pellet. Okay. So you're not cooling it down to the right temperature. Gotcha. Um, operator runs too fast and doesn't pay attention to that. They send hot cubes to a bin at night and you come in in the morning. Well, they've been sitting in the bin oh, sweating. getting hot, yep. sweating. Yep. So so okay. you have a chance for mold. That's awesome. So okay. allowing that proper time in the cooler to cool to get to the right temperature is ideal. It's got to be done. Gotcha. Uh, and then, like I said, that's that's the biggest thing when you see a, a mold like that is the proper cooling. The proper cooling is, is yeah. crucial. It's interesting. So from here, uh, the pellets are now done, the texture feed is all done, and it dumps into a bagging line. Uh, and then we can kind of look at that yep. process on it. The last process before the feed gets loaded onto the semi is the bagging process. So explain what happens here. The feed, the pellet is made, the texture feed is made, and it dumps it here. Tell me about what happens here. 
Alright, so everything turned out right. We got the right pellets cooled to the right thing. We got the right product mix. We got everything correct. Um, it's coming to the stacking line. Um, up above us, we've got multiple stacking bins that store the feed ready to be stacked. The feed's going to flow down through the process. The first thing we're going to do is screen it off. So we're, we're going to take the good pellets, remove any excess fine that happened in the conveying process, and then we're going to we're going to set those aside and use them at a different time. Um, the good pellets will then go through a second process where we add the, the liquid. Um, omega here, we're, we're going to add soil to it at a certain percentage. So it's going to go through a roller, a tumbler, that as it tumbles, the, the liquid sprays on there. Is that also where a textured feed would get added molasses yeah, they get and things added, like that? Yes, okay. Yeah. So. The, the, the oil is going to get sprayed on there, it's going to get a good even coat, and then it's going to come down to the bag. The scales weigh it up to 50 pounds or the desired weight. Drop it in the bag, sew it shut, tag, and send it off. Out the door. Yep. Cool. watching this episode of Steve's Horse Show. We were at the Blue Bonnet Feed Mill in Ardmore, Oklahoma. We hope that you enjoyed it and we want to thank them for showing us around for several hours and showing us how horse feed is made. Thank you for watching.